This episode of Cut the Clutter brings you a very unusual story or let me say an insight from a very unusual story and this was a public event. Now last week in London in London in a building called Thames House now if you've been reading spy fiction a little bit or generally keeping an eye on the British media you will know that Thames House which is sizable building not far from what is called the Lambeth Bridge on the Thames that is the headquarters of MI5 the british internal spying agency it also does counter intelligence for united kingdom for uk now that day the head of MI5 who's general ken mccallum and his american counterpart that is the head of fbi christopher ray not gray ray w r a y they jointly addressed this is a very unusual thing these are not the kind of things that happen every day they jointly addressed business leaders in the headquarters of MI5 and each one gave a sizable speech now these were long speeches for intelligence chiefs who are usually known to be reticent and usually people of few words i am not saying men of few words because as we know CIA has been headed by a woman so they they gave these speeches in detail and what were they doing they were telling the leaders of the business community that the big threat that they are dealing with right now and this is the espionage threat because they are protecting their countries and their nato allies and five eyes allies from espionage that is their main charter and they said that while they keep on dealing with russia in fact the fbi director christopher ray said that while our laser eye remains focused on russia particularly with the invasion in ukraine our big threat right now the much bigger threat is china so both of them talked about china being a much bigger threat so what i am doing is i am sharing with you links to both speeches in full some of these will run on the screen as i talk and you can also read them i'll share the links with you in the description and also i should not feel so important as i would if somebody had secretly slipped these out of slip these out of that conference hall to me uh, as exclusives no these are not exclusive i did something as simple as go to the fbi website and the mi5 website and and print these out or download these so you can do that also now these are two very interesting and important speeches also they are both essentially saying the same thing they are trying to put the fear of god in the minds of the western business leaders who are doing business in china with chinese companies and both are very careful to continue saying continue to qualify whatever they are saying by adding we are not saying don't do business with china or the chinese companies must do that we know the opportunity that exists there but be careful the chinese don't just want your money the chinese chinese want your secrets they want your intellectual properties they want to be able to hack you they want to be compromise your key staff and through you they want it to get into our security systems they want to steal what is cutting edge in our technologies from research in rockets in space artificial intelligence to jet engines to covid pharmaceuticals and believe it or not gmcs because fbi director at one point says in his speech that they even caught chinese agents who gone to deep inside the american heartland and they are digging out gm seeds from there to take them back to china so they can start reverse engineer them now we knew that machinery can be reverse engineered but in this case what's been genetically engineered first is also going to be genetically uh, is also going to be genetically reengineered and he says that they are taking these away why because otherwise it would have taken them decades to develop these technologies and billions of dollars in expense now in fact since i am a supporter of gmc this is this is an aside this also makes me interested because chinese have been resistant to gm seeds barring cotton like india they haven't allowed other gm seeds like corn soybean uh, that most other big growing countries like america canada in latin america africa are now doing so could it be could it be the chinese are doing it only until they develop their own because if they allow these now 
then all that money will have to go to American and European, American companies, not European companies, Europeans not like GM. Euro Europeans are much too lazy and entitled. They don't even want to give up, uh, give up cheap Russian gas. So let's not talk, talk about Americans. But the Chinese, why would they depend on American companies for these GMC technologies when they can steal these and develop their own? That was an important takeaway. I can either read to you highlights from the British MI5 chief or highlights from the FBI chief. I told you that in a sense they are saying the same thing. But you know, if you see, if you see the discourse from the British security system and the American security system, you know there's a basic difference. The British usually talk on a larger, more broad plane. Americans get into specifics. The British make the larger point very clearly and very unambiguously. The Americans then go into the details of minutiae experiences. So it's like, it's like on the one side, you see the theme of a story. On the other side, you see the dramatization of the story. So I'm not giving you both, both the speeches. That would be a bit like bringing, bringing the mountain to you and leaving it to you to take out the herb that matters, that's going to cure somebody who's very sick or who's been lying unconscious like Lakshman and Ramayana, not like that. So I will take the essence from both and use what I find is more easy to understand from either. So look at first of all, broad picture. This is MI5 Director General Ken McCallum. Now he says, number one, and I'm listing these points and these will run on my screen also. Number one, the most game-changing challenge we face today comes from Chinese Communist Party. This is very this is very important because none of these people say that we are fighting the Chinese people or Chinese companies. They say we are fighting Chinese Communist Party and Chinese government. To that extent, this usage is not very different from what Mike Pompeo in the past and Trump administration generally had been using about China. They always said CCP. They never even called Xi Jinping the president. They said Xi Jinping the general secretary. Now, the most game-changing challenge we face comes from Chinese Communist Party. It's covertly applying pressure across the globe. Covertly applying pressure across the globe. The CCP adopts a whole-of-state approach. What is the whole of state approach? Where businesses and individuals are forced by law, by Chinese law, to cooperate with the party, right? His second point, MI5's aim, and he also speaks for FBI in this case because both say that they are together and they are two edges of the same sword. My words, not theirs. MI5's aim is not to act against China, but rather against the Chinese Communist Party and other Chinese state organs. This is not an attempt to cut off China and Chinese people. The same thing is repeated by the FBI chief also. Number three, he said China is at the top of the agenda of the intelligence sharing relationship between the United States, Britain, Canada, Australia and New Zealand, often referred to as the Five Eyes. Listen carefully. MI5 is conducting, he says, seven times as many investigations involving China as they were in 2018. Next point, number four, a year ago, the US, the European Union and NATO formally accused the Chinese government of a sophisticated attack on Microsoft's widely used email server, marking the first time NATO had taken such a step. And I will tell you more detail about it when I, when I start referring to the FBI director's speech. That hack, MI5 chief said, compromised more than 100,000 servers worldwide and Microsoft alleged that this was done by a Beijing based hacking group. Now I will tell you the detail. Uh, as I told you, one gives you the theme, other gives you the details. So Christopher Ray of FBI in his speech tells us what happened in this case. He says in this case, the Chinese actually infiltrated what is called as the Microsoft Exchange Server Software. And they did that by, by setting up more than 10,000 web shells or kind of back doors to enter this system. Then they began, began vacuum cleaning more than 100,000 of these servers. And he said then that this was very big, very effective, very successful. So he said, this is an example of how the Chinese operate. This is Christopher Ray. He says, this is a bit like somebody walks in through your front door and then robs you, not through the back door and comes and steals your stuff. Chinese function like this. So this was the Microsoft event. Then number five. So next point, number five, 
CCP strategy to acquire advantage. Now this has many subsections. A. Covert theft. All these will run on my screen. A. Covert theft. Last year, Chinese intelligence officer Xu Yanjun was convicted in a US court on charges of economic espionage and theft and theft of trade secrets from US aviation sector. Shu was active in Europe too. He had been part of a prolific Ministry of State Security, that is MSS, that is the Chinese intelligence organization. Shu was active in Europe too. He had been part of a prolific Ministry of State Security, MSS network targeting the aerospace sector. Once again, Christopher Ray tells us that the Chinese got into GE's engine making system. GE, as we know, is among the biggest aircraft engine makers in the world. Got they bought over or hired or rented or compromised a key figure and one of among one of their vendors, and through that vendor, through that agent, got into their systems and stole their security. So once again, one gives you the theme, other gives you the drama, the detail. B A is covert theft, B is tech transfer. And again, there's an example. Next subsection B tech transfer. In 2017, Smiths Harlow, a UK-based precision engineering firm, entered into a deal with a Chinese firm, Futures Aerospace. And then you know what happened? The first of three agreed technology transfers of Futures pay only 3 million pounds. Only 3 million pounds. That's like 30 crore rupees these days. Only 3 million pounds for quality control procedures and training courses. And while these quality control procedures and training courses were going on, they had to get into their computer systems and they had to share their intellectual properties. The moment they had figured out their intellectual properties and their secrets, they abandoned the deal. Three years later, Smith's Harlow, which was going to sell their technology to futures, that went bankrupt, right? That went in insolvent in 2020, whereas Futures Aerospace of China had all the technology. C, next subsection, exploiting research. CCP attempts to gain cutting-edge national security advantage. In 2020, the US stopped issuing new visas in certain fields to researchers from PLA universities to prevent this. In the UK, the academic technology approval scheme was reformed to harden defenses. And since then, over 50 PLA-linked students have left. He's talking about American, about British universities. At the same time, FBI chief tells us that the Chinese interfere so much, Chinese intelligence interfere so much that they've also begun to influence illegally and wrongly and unfairly the functioning on Committee on Foreign Investments in the US or what is called as CFIUS. And they try to influence their decisions and FBI and the American security agencies have now tightened that. He also said, that is Christopher Ray, the FBI chief, he also says that Chinese also draw advantage by buying up what is called as SPACs. What are SPACs? If you are in business or if in stock markets, you will perhaps know it. But SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Companies. So you buy some shares in a company, but with overweight voting rights. So the other guy uh, doesn't see you as the owner of the company. The other guy thinks you are only a small shareholder or smaller shareholder than somebody else. But your voting rights are greater than your vote share. This way, these become hidden investments. And he said, he said that they found hundreds of cases on CFI US list of such investments, company, companies with such investments. And now that they have found these, he's, they are busting these. And he says that Chinese also insist that any company doing business in China or in foreign, any foreign company has to have a Chinese partner. And you must understand, both the spy chiefs say this, you must understand that every Chinese company under the Chinese law, under the Chinese law, had to work with the Chinese security agencies. They have no choice. In fact, every Chinese company, the FBI chief points out, by law has to also have a cell of the Chinese Communist Party. So there is nothing, no Chinese company of any kind. Right now, we are seeing all these headlines of Chinese companies being graded for tax in India. So these guys are saying that no Chinese company of any kind is not in a way owned by the government or controlled by the government and the Chinese Communist Party. So be careful, you know what they are doing. Again, the FBI chief says that the Chinese also 
say, Chinese government says that if you own a sizable number of shares in Chinese companies, then you have to share your cyber vulnerabilities with us. Now, this is like really giving a thief the keys to your house. Because the Chinese are saying that they are doing this to protect themselves. But once you tell them your cyber vulnerabilities, you can be quite sure that this will be used now to rifle your own trade secrets and your own, own, own functioning. And again, the FBI chief says the Chinese, are, Chinese have even gone deeper to spy into American COVID research. They said they've, they've used human spying to get into American COVID research. And he says that, look, you must understand, all of you are getting so interested in China. I, I'm not saying don't do any business with China. And he says, before I came back to public service for 12 years, I was in the private sector and I was consulting with many companies who are doing business in China. And I know that this is a very lucrative opportunity. I'm not saying stop doing business in China, but be careful in terms of understanding what you are doing. And he says, look, they influence everything and but at the same time now this is something which some people find a little alarmist so there is this strategic scholar i follow and i learn a great deal from him uh, because he finds he puts out a lot of interesting and important stuff his name is elbridge his name is elbridge colby please see his twitter handle if you if you're interested in these matters you might want to follow it also he wrote also a famous work called strategy of denial he has said, he has looked at this, this speech by, by the FBI director and he says it's almost alarming to me, worrying for me, given how, how lightly he's talking about Chinese invasion of Taiwan, as if it's an inevitability. So Christopher Gray says that, look, if China, when China invades Taiwan, can you imagine the kind of business disruption it will cause? To me, it looks like a little bit of a dog whistle to say that, listen, don't do so much business with China. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Then he goes on to say the, the Chinese are interfering in our elections. He mentions that the Chinese directly interfered in a congressional election in New York to ensure the defeat of a candidate who was a known Tiananmen Square protester. And they say their intelligence agency hired private detectives in New York to find dirt on him. They were not able to find dirt on him. Then they rented a sex worker to trap him. That did not happen. Then they drew up a plan to have a vehicle knock him down to make, and, and in such a way that he dies, but it looks like an accident. That's like the movies. Now, I'm not saying any of this. This is the FBI director saying this in public. That He also says that one employee of a major multinational US hotel chain only did as much as to like a Tibetan tweet, a pro-Tibetan tweet. With that, the Chinese banned that organization, shut down all its websites, etc., for an entire week in China and forbade it from selling anything in China while they might have had properties in China. He says that one executive of NBA, that is National Basketball Association, said something, tweeted once about protests in Hong Kong, supporting the protests in Hong Kong. For a whole year, the Chinese blackballed NBA broadcasts in their country. So that is how the Chinese state functions. So now we go back to MI5 chief because he's setting the theme, the agenda. So point D, information advantage. The CCP doesn't just use intelligence officers posing as diplomats in the classic fashion. Privileged information is gathered on multiple channels in what is called the thousand grains of sand strategy. Thousand grains of sand. So each, each grain of sand brings something to you. And then you filter it and you see, you scan it, you filter it and see what is useful and put it together. He explains it. One, think tanks and academics have also been found cooperating with the Chinese to pass critical information. Now that is almost McCarthyist because he's suspecting his own think tanks and academics. Then examples, in Germany, a retired political scientist and his wife who together ran a foreign policy think tank passed information to the Chinese intelligence services for almost 10 years. Two, in Estonia, a NATO maritime scientist was convicted for passing information to his Chinese handlers who claimed to be working for a think tank. So think tanks are a way, one of the methods that the Chinese use. E, the next point, cultivating new contacts. 
the deceptive use of professional networking sites is well known linkedin for example uh, and he's not using linkedin as an example i'm just mentioning it to simplify so we can understand it the deceptive use of professional networking sites is well known an expert receives an approach online an online approach comes can you do this for us i'll pay you this much etc sounds quite normal an expert receives an approach online goes through a recruitment process and is offered an attractive employment opportunity right you we've seen some of that happening in india uh, and we have some prominent examples also of this fraud he is taken to china then where he is wined and dined now wined and dined all this while through my life i thought was an indianism i thought this was part of indian english but this is none else than general mccallum head of mi5 so i presume it's it's used in good english so he says he's taken to china where he's wined and dined i presume good chinese food he's then asked and paid for detailed technical information companies such as these are usually run by chinese intelligence officers he says next that is his main point 6 interference activity Chinese intelligence services or bodies within the CCP itself, such as its United Front Work Department (UFWD), so these are the new organizations we are hearing about today. UFWD or United Front Work Department, these organizations mount patient, well-funded, deceptive campaigns to buy and exert influence. And then he goes on to add that MI5 issued an interference alert. earlier this year to parliament this highlighted the risk posed by an individual connected to the ufwd who had developed extensive links within parliament british parliament through networks of this sort the ufwd described by mao is comes from mao's times described by mao as one of ccp's quote and quote magic weapons aims to amplify pro ccp voices and silence those that question the ccp's legitimacy and authority the aim of these tactics tactics is to create a debt of obligation on the part of the target there's an iou i did you did so much for you now aap mere liye kuch nahi karoge what are you doing for me who will eventually find it difficult to refuse inevitable requests for favor in return because this one is an honorable person not an intelligence agency which follows sam dam dand bhed that is deception bribery deceit whatever that's how intelligence that is how the intelligence craft is uh, practiced then last point implications of a chinese invasion of taiwan now this is this has been stated much more strongly by the fbi director and once again it looks like both of them see this as an inevitability some day or maybe maybe as i said earlier this is a kind of a dog whistle to get western business leaders more concerned about putting more money into china which is something that india should take note of and then both say how to protect yourself come to us we are there to help you we are the intelligence agencies of the two biggest two two most powerful democracies we work together we are also members of the five eye alliances we will come and we'll give you the methods and means to fight this uh, threat and then in conclusion i will quote the fbi director he says come work with us the two agencies friendly agencies we can arm you with the intelligence to counter this because he said what we are talking about right now is not just geopolitics our agenda is not only geopolitics but it's also business forecasting and then he says in conclusion we have the rule of law we have democracy right and chinese as as each of them said one said the chinese are influencing the congressional committees that is that, that are deciding on foreign investments the other says the chinese are getting into the parliamentary processes so he says we have the rule of law the chinese see it as our weakness and they try to exploit it we have to ensure that while we keep the rule of law we don't let the chinese use it as a weakness so i thought these two statements by the two intelligence chiefs in public where the speeches have been released in public are very 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 significant and we should take note of these also